today, I'm still in the middle of having a little bit of COVID, uh, but I needed to get out of the house. So I sound a little congested, a little nasal, getting a little restless. So what I wanted to do today was wanted to cover five things I love about the EV6 and five things I dislike about the EV6. And I figured I'd do it while I'm driving because that's where most of the character of this car comes out. So let's start with five things I like. Number one, sorry, I made a list and I just have to look down every now and then. Number one, acceleration. And I don't think anything will ever get better uh, or at least top the acceleration. <laughs> so much fun. In sport mode, this thing is still a blast. Is it a plaid? No, but Around town, this thing is just so much fun to drive still. The instant acceleration, the instant torque, um, although it loses a lot of power as you kind of get up in the power band, it's still very quick and it still continues to uh, impress me just on a daily basis. So I love driving this thing. And I am uh, going to do some zero to 60 pulls just to kind of confirm some. And I've done some already and I've gotten about uh, 4.6, 4.7. Uh, but do want to do some official ones and post them using my draggy. Number two, looks. I think this is still one of the best looking EVs out there. Obviously I'm biased, but I think the, the lines and of course some of the things that I've done I think do make it look a lot better. But there's just, there's a lot of bland cars out there and I like most of the EVs out there. I like the Polestar except that rear I don't like. And I do like Teslas for the most part, but there's just too many and too common. But Either way, I think this car definitely stands out. This and the Ionic 5 both stand out very, very dramatically in a crowd. And every time I walk up to this car, especially with it being lowered and with the wheels and the tint and you know the blue calipers, I, I just love looking at it. Every time I pull it out of the garage, I get really happy. Every time I walk up to it in a parking lot, I get happy. So number two looks. I think it's uh, one of the best things about this car. Number three. I still love the interior screens. These screens are phenomenal. They still make the interior, I know it's only been six months since I've had this car, but they still make the interior look a lot nicer than, in all honesty, some of the build quality, which I'll talk about is, but these screens are phenomenal. And I know they're implementing this into a lot of the new Kias, so a lot of people will get to enjoy these, even on non-EVs, but it is a really good design. And I still think they're very informative, they're well laid out, and they show the right amount of information. It's not overload, it's not super customizable, but it does the job, and it looks very uniform and clean. All right, number four already, okay. Charging speeds, yes. So I've done a few trips, not too many road trips since I bought the car originally, but I love the charging speeds. I love being able to pull up to a 350 kilowatt charger and just go to town. And I just recently did a trip to Houston, if you haven't seen that video, uh, I went and saw m and uh, for some custom parts. But anyway, I uh, recently did that road trip and I stopped once or twice on both ways from Dallas to Houston. And the charging was so awesome. It was 18 minutes, 15 minutes for the most part. And I was up to 80%, over 80% in some cases. And it was just so good and I love it. I love being able to pull up to a 350 charger. Now that can get annoying, especially if there's a non 350 capable car parked in a 350 because Charging etiquette's just not there yet. There's a car there. I hope they're not taking the 350. Oh, sorry, lady. I'm taking it. Number five, uniqueness. I already talked about the looks, and this car obviously does look very unique. But overall, you still don't see a lot of these in the market. And I still, even when I see one, I turn my head. And even with the stock 19s, which I'm not a fan of, I still think it just stands out like you can take this anywhere and it just stands out people still look and i know some people don't like attention cars but i'm sorry if you're buying an ev6 you're gonna get a little bit of attention it's just a very unique design and a very unique car that people just don't expect and when it first came out i really expected this to kind of take the market by storm i know there's supply chain issues but for the most part this car still is a little rare. Uh, I don't want to say rare, but it still stands out. It's a little unique. It's still not that well known. It might be well known among the EV crowd, but the general public still isn't fully aware of what this car is. All right, so two bonus things that I like that I thought about as I was leaving to 
film this video. Number one, the uh, remote backup feature or pull forward feature. I use that feature basically every day and anyone with a tight garage space will probably agree with me that that's the best feature that Hyundai and Kia have implemented that really a lot of other manufacturers don't have. I love having it because in my garage, it's just, it's always packed, it's always crowded. I don't want to ding my doors. So I basically use it every day to pull my car out of the garage. And um, the extra bonus one, the AC performance. The AC works so well. In the Texas summer, it performs exceptionally well and it keeps me cool. I've never once been like, man, I wish this was a little bit better, uh, at least in the front. The back is a different story. But So that kind of summarizes the top five plus two bonus items that I love about the, the EV6. Moving on to uh, things I don't like as much. So number one, uh, the sound system. The sound system has been a pain in the ass since day one. It's always taken a lot of tuning. And of course, I haven't had good sound in almost, uh, I think we're coming up on a month maybe a month and a week of no sound because my amp went out and on top of the garbage tuning that they did, the amp is a piece of crap that obviously is causing a lot of people problems. And I still have no time uh, or estimated time of arrival for my replacement part. So until then, I will continue to say that the sound system sucks. Just give me the sound system from the Ionic 5 or literally any car. I'll take a rental car sound system at this point. So number two, Cheap interior plastics. Uh, I've said that I really like the interior and for the most part, it does feel really nice in here until you start really touching some of the plastics, especially in the back. And a lot of the plastics, although they don't creak, I will give them that, feel very cheap and they also kind of look very cheap. So uh, I know it's a Kia, so you gotta, you gotta expect some cutting of costs, but the plastics are pretty cheap. And when you think about paying 50 to 60, 60 plus for some people, uh, $1,000 for a car, you expect a little bit of better plastic or at least cover the plastic up, make it pretty. You can also feel some of the cheapness on some of the things in the front, such as the center console uh, around the, the window buttons and all that. Number three, the remote climate start feature. That just is, there's basically a 50-50% chance that the remote start, or uh, remote climate start uh, works. Now, I always get the confirmation that it works. But there's times where I'll get in the car and I'm like, I swear I didn't do anything. And there's also times where I'll get in and it's just bone chillingly cold in here. Sometimes I'll even poke my head into the garage and I hear the AC compressor running, but then I get in my car and it's just not very cold. Uh, but the AC is fine. Once I get in, I start the car and the AC is working. It's not the AC. I think it's just something with the remote climate start feature. So yeah, it's, uh, it's finicky. It works sometimes. And when it does, it works really well. Number four, this is such a small, stupid thing, but I guess I deal with it a lot, especially since I film videos, but I also get in and out of the car a lot, uh, just with my lifestyle and the things I do. And the annoying Hyundai Kia cars on, close your door with the key in your pocket beep. The long, annoying, high-pitched kind of tone that plays every time you walk out of the car with your keys and close the door. I get the reason for it, but for the love of God, make it shorter or like a horn or something. But it is very annoying and it constantly does it on this car. And this isn't an EV6 feature, this is a Kia Hyundai feature. And last but not least, and I, I don't know if this should actually be placed a little bit higher, but I, I talked to some of the people on the forums about how they drive very spiritedly. What I found in my six months of ownership is I actually kind of baby this car. And I baby this car because I don't feel comfortable with breaking anything because I don't have confidence in getting parts or the right shop to work on it. I've heard horror stories about people being out of this car for weeks, if not even months in some situations. The idea of 
even breaking a, a quarter panel, scratching a quarter panel, breaking a control arm, and then waiting around until they say, oh, the park's here. I don't have confidence that any of the dealers in this area, or anywhere in the US at least, are prepared to really work on these at a timely manner. And I, because of that, I just baby the car a little bit, and I don't have, have as much fun as I potentially could. I don't have confidence in getting parts replaced for this car in a timely manner, so therefore I am very cautious at driving it. Um, probably a lot less aggressive than I drive my other cars. Case in point, my wife hit a curb and cracked this little piece of trim right here. It's a lower bumper. It turns out that this is actually attached to this whole lower piece on this bumper. And I found the part number, except I'm finding two different part numbers. One is a matte black and one has a gloss black. I obviously have gloss black and I don't want matte black. And the gloss is not available, so I don't even know what to do. I've called around a couple of dealerships. They said they don't know how to get it. So really frustrating. Um, I would just love to order a part and get a replacement and fix this because this really annoys me. So that wraps up my five things that I like and I dislike about the Kia EV6. And as I mentioned, kind of in writing at the beginning of the, of the video, this doesn't represent my comprehensive list. As I was filming this, as I was editing it, there was other things that were popping up and I was like, eh, that could have been a priority. But overall, I'm pretty happy with this list, although a lot of it might be subjective. So I'm curious to see what uh, your opinions are. If you own an EV6, what are your thoughts? Um, however, before I actually exit this video, I think there's something fascinating that I wanted to post on here. And it's a really cool insight of some of the US owners and kind of what their opinions are on the EV6. So I run this Facebook group called Kia EV6 USA Owners. And it's obviously compiled of uh, about a little over 2,000 of the US EV6 owners. And in this vid in the on the forums, I actually asked them to name one thing that they dislike and one thing that they like. A couple of people give some multiple uh, options, but I counted them anyway. But I want to pull these charts up because it's really interesting to see the kind of the mix between what people actually like and dislike. So it's not just my opinion. You're hearing it from, I would say, probably about 50 respondents on this. So it's a very small part of the group that actually owns an EV6. But I also think it's, it's just a cool little point of feedback on what people may like or may not like about the EV6. So I'm going to pop these results up, read them, uh, take them for what it's worth, and I'd love to kind of discuss this in the comments. So if you have any questions or comments or if you disagree with me, agree with me, whatever, uh, feel free to leave it, leave, it, uh, leave it down below. Thank you for watching. Um, and uh, I am working on a six month ownership update, a little bit more comprehensive than here's five things I like and five things I don't like. I'll talk a little bit more about just the daily ownership perspective, kind of how the car is working and uh, what I've learned about EV ownership in the last six months. And if you're still debating on getting an EV6, I'll kind of talk about whether I recommend getting one or not. Thank you for watching and stay tuned and please subscribe if you don't because it really does help. I'm very close to 1,000 subscribers and that would really, really help the channel. So thanks and have a good one.